And I'm going to bring forward and introduce my colleague here at the New America Foundation who will be moderating this next event, Mr. Charles Kenny. And this is called The Next Green Revolution. Is there an app for that? Charles Kenny, who is the author of Getting Better, Why Global Development is Succeeding and How We Can Improve the World Even More. Hi, Charles. Uh, so I'll let a few people come in and out here. Can I ask the conversation in the room to quiet down, please? Thank you very much. Charles Kenny and the Next Green Revolution. Is there an app for that? Well, thanks very much. Uh, um, and it's, it's great to be here. Um, uh, I have the pleasure uh, of in in introducing uh, Lynn Roach, who's uh, the, the Planning and Coordination Officer in the uh, Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs Office of the Africa Bureau uh, at the Department of State. She's been at State for a couple of decades now and has uh, served in Georgia and Hong Kong and Mongolia and Peru and Mexico, uh, 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 all over the shop, um, and was actually a senior fellow in the Atlantic Council uh, between 2008 and 2009. And the reason she's here is because uh, uh, you know, her current work uh, is, is looking at uh, uh, technology and Africa, um, including running a program called Apps for Africa. She's also um, uh, involved in the, the whole of government, uh, uh, U.S. government uh, uh, exercise uh, uh, called Feed the Future. Um, and so uh, it, it is a, a great person to talk about uh, sort of the role of, of, of technology uh, in Africa, in agriculture, and what uh, the U.S. government is currently doing about that. Um, I don't believe the State Department actually has a program to uh, clone meat, but maybe that's no, one no, of the no, things. No, 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 uh, working in the Africa Bureau, we have the opportunity to work on um, a number of the issues that are really of um, most importance on the continent, and one of those um, is concerning uh, feeding the future and uh, hunger. So we, um, in the Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs Office, we support all of those policy objectives um, for the Africa Bureau. And um, actually, back in 2010, um, Apps for Africa began as it was a great idea out of the office of the Secretary's Senior Advisor for Innovation with Alana Berkowitz and her colleagues there. And um, they had an idea to try to, in East Africa, just looked at four countries in East Africa, um, launch a competition for um, applications that would bring together civil society and tech innovators. Didn't have a particular theme to it. Um, ended up calling it the Civic Challenge, um, but the winner of that competition was the sort of now renowned ICAO, and Alana Berkowitz uh, will be here or is here, and we'll talk to you a little bit about that um, uh, in, during this session. That um, app's competition was kind of quickly organized, quickly implemented, uh, just sort of helicoptered in and helicoptered out. Um, but the Africa Bureau, since we had funded the program, we were sort of left with this great platform. And we then looked ahead to what were some other ways we might use the platform. And John Gossier, who um, is a TED Senior Fellow and also Director of Africa out of Uganda, uh, came forward. And he was interested in also um, working with us for another competition. So with the uh, COP17 going to take place in Durban in November, December, we looked ahead and thought, well, what kind of activity would we really like to support on the continent? Not, as I was telling Charles earlier, not um, to directly support or participate in COP17, but as a kind of parallel activity to really have a conversation with Africans about what um, they think climate change is, what the concerns, their concerns are, and really um, build awareness about climate change, but also partner with Africans um, for them to come up with 
their own solutions. So we came up with the idea for the um, Apps for Africa Climate Challenge. It was run in three tranches, first uh, with West and Central, then East, and we just finished the Southern competition. We decided to go with West and Central first because um, the, the tech innovators are much more developed in East and Southern Africa. So we wanted to give um, a chance to sort of develop and move ahead a little bit on the west side. We also partnered with the, uh, I guess it's a program called the Adaptation Partnership, which is a State Department USAID um, program where they partnered with um, a number of other countries to build programs and, again, bring together civil society um, in uh, countries, I know of Africa, but in other parts of the world, to look at what the uh, climate change challenges really are. So um, in partnering with that adaptation partnership for the Apps for Africa um, competition, we also piggybacked on what they were doing in terms of identifying civil society groups, identifying concerns on the continent um, that then we could pull in for the, for the Apps for Africa competition. The one other, before, you know, maybe we can discuss some other aspects, but one other um, uh, aspect that we really beefed up in the second uh, competition was the face-to-face -face and really bringing people together to have the conversation. First, because climate change was going to be a trickier subject um, than just saying, you know, what are your problems and how, how could um, mo mobile applications solve them. So really trying to um, have a conversation with civil society groups, identifying them, talking to groups, and then saying, oh, do you know anyone else who would like to come to this session? So we held a series of brainstorming sessions um, throughout the competition over the fall and um, that just ended. I think we held about 20 um, different brainstorming sessions, many of them in conjunction with the embassies in those countries. Um, to really get the two groups together and then talk the civil society or agricultural groups and then talk with tech innovators about how do we partner. Can you give us some examples of, of some of the, the, the people who went to the competition and what they were proposing? Uh, some of them, well, um, we, we have had great winners. Not all of them, I would say, were you know, specifically in agriculture because we also uh, framed the competition pretty broadly in order to bring in lots of ideas. So some of them might have been in emergency management um, or healthcare. But um, the first place uh, winner in East Africa was called the Grainy Bunch. And that was um, from Tanzania. And it um, works with a national grain supply um, chain management system that monitors purchase, storage, distribution, and consumption of grain across the country. Um, the second place winner um, for East Africa was uh, a Makulima calculator. It was a Kenyan uh, application to help farmers decide when to plant crops and how to select the best crops for a given location. And the third place in East Africa was called Agro Universe, and that was for um, creating a regional marketplace that would help uh, communities prepare for pest and drought-induced food shortages. Uh, in West and Central Africa, the third place winner was called Farmer Line, and that was out of Ghana. Um, it was to help farmers in rural Ghana obtain information that they need to increase yields in face of uh, climate, change, uh, climate change and challenges from climate change. So lots of <coughs> different kinds of applications and really in a sort of exploratory mode of um, where are these going? What kinds of issues were people interested in? For the competition, they only needed to submit, you know, sort of the very beginnings mm -hmm. of what this application might look like. It could be more fully developed or, or more in the idea stage. Um, the hope was also that with prize money and also with um, some of the uh, interest from our partners, from Google, from TED, that, that then those winners, or, or anyone really, you can go online and see um, all of the um, 
uh, entries, that then other partners would be interested in supporting the development of some of these applications. So, um, it's, I mean, it's an area where the, 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 the U.S. government as a whole has done some um, uh, I I exciting and important work in the past, sort of a, you know, data for agriculture. I mean, I remember 20 years ago, I, I, I spent some time in the uh, uh, Ministry of Agriculture in Tanzania and, and asked them how they came up with uh, some of their statistics on, on, on crop yields um, uh, every year. And the answer was, well, we take last year's estimate and I kind of look at what happened on my farm and I guess. Um, uh, so, and I think that may still be the kind of usual practice. Uh, uh, having these sorts of, uh, 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 of applications allowing you to collect data, you know, crowdsource data information, I think is, is, is really exciting. And it's something that, I mean, you know, FuseNet and stuff, that the, the, the US government has played an important role in supporting um, uh, to date. I think, you know, has shown the power of these things, especially in, in, in cases where uh, uh, we're, we're seeing you know, food shortages and, and, and developing famines, which links to um, uh, the question of, of, of this sort of broader U.S. government initiative, um, uh, uh, Feed the Future. Can you, can you just say a few words about, about that? Um, well, in Feed the Future um, is led by USAID, and I know um, someone will be here um, later on the podium uh, speaking from USAID. Um, but it's a USAID State Department um, sort of whole of government initiative to really look um, much more at agriculture-led um, development and how do we sort of provide some catalyst for that? How do we look more creatively? How do we, um, how do we partner with host nations? And from my perspective, how do we partner with African nations to really develop um, their own kinds of solutions for what they're seeing um, as their issues on the ground. So um, I think it's from also from our perspective, from our office, it's an opportunity to both um, put, put some funding into that. So from uh, state, three and, a half, uh, three and a half million a year, also to leverage that um, Feed the Future initiative for other donors. So I think right to date, this is something like $18 million um, in other uh, donors' contributions to the effort in, in various ways. Um, and to sort of really look at some specific ways that we can also, um, along with that um, agriculture-led, look at um, enhanced nutrition um, kinds of projects on the, on the continent, and also build awareness um, for what the program is and how people can participate in the program. So, um, Let's throw, throw it out to the audience, uh, please. Um, down here at the front, is there a mic? Or well, you're just going to shout? <laughs> I have a loud voice. Ah. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you. I'm Penny Starr with CNS News. Can you, I, I didn't quite understand what you were talking about, the funding program, the three and a half million. Is that, uh, is that, funding from the federal government, and then you also mentioned uh, donors or people that are contributing. Can you explain what the, the name of the program and exactly how it's funded? It's called Feed the Future, and it's an initiative and um, that's led by USAID, um, but that is federal funding, um, and that's worldwide. There are 20 focus countries, 12 of which are in Africa, um, and then by um, sort of naming and pledging and sort of focusing our efforts on that Feed the Future project, we've been able to encourage other donors to also um, for, you know, up to $18 million from a number of other countries and specifically working with Brazil and India and also South Africa um, on, on this partnership um, have been able to in increase the um, amount of money. Um, Haiti is currently at about 10.5 million people going to 15 million in 10 years and 20 million in 15 years at current trends, but it only produces food for about 2.5 million people um, internally for itself. So I'm wondering if this program would be applicable as USAID you know, willing to do things with Haiti, which obviously has a huge need in terms of, of building its value chains. Uh, and I'm, my concern is that the policies that are currently held are creating more and more dependency on the outside 
with no constraints on uh, the population related to its carrying capacities. Um, I want to defend Lynn a little bit here. Uh, uh, <laughs> in that she's meant to be talking about technology for development, but uh, 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 if you have a yeah, I, I mean, I think if you'll be here, I perhaps save that question for the USAID um, person, or um, I think if maybe I can give you a website to sort of look at exactly what Feed the Future is. It should, um, although I'm not involved in that. Um, because it's in another area, but it should also be, um, it's a worldwide initiative, and so it should be directing our efforts, that is US government efforts, to those kinds of programs which are um, sort of agriculture-led and also um, based on what countries need, what they identify as their needs. And Hi, I think it was like for the ACMJ Global Consulting. Um, as we start to use more apps to sort of push information out to re regions and that you know don't traditionally have access to that information, how do you see the you know rectifying that with the need for face-to-face -face contact through like extension officers and kind of more of a traditional way, and then or how do you see those sort of playing together? Is one sort of replacing the other, or do you see it as just an extension or an, a, an evolving sort of way of extension to work? Well, I hope that um, it is sort of um, a boost and that the mobile technologies could be used um, also by extension officers to kind of expand their um, realm. I think what we're looking at also is what are ways that different ways, new ways of um, communicating, sharing information, how can that um, support a sort of broader network where, you know, maybe we there won't be more people, or maybe it can also train more people locally. Um, so I, I mean, I don't see it as taking over, which is also what happened, you know, when we started to develop um, the Apps for Africa Climate Challenge program, was that even though there had been one Apps for Africa competition, um, it wasn't that oh, everybody would already understand this, and it, we actually saw that the face-to-face -face part um, was even more crucial because we wanted to get more people involved, build more networks so that even among, while we were building networks among this, between civil society and the um, tech innovators, it was also an opportunity for different civil society groups who may not have been in the same room before for them to get together and know each other and the same among the tech innovators. So um, I'm, I think that um, the development of different ways of communication and you know whether that's new websites or looking at you know bulk text SMS or podcasts different kinds of audio video um, technologies uh, I think that's in support of and alongside of and can really um, be an added benefit um, my name is Ben Adam um, I want to you know what next after winning a contest you know apps for africa uh, this is because we some of us have noticed that there's so much going on there's so much apps being developed every day but it's like we are losing track of you know monitoring the implementation how people are using it the impact on the users and all those things so you know i want to know if there's anything going on to follow up with those who are winning some of this competition. Well, and um, thank you for that question. And Elana Berkowitz is here, and we'll talk with um, the winner, um, ICAO, and shortly. That was also another part to build into the, to make sure that we included that in the second competition, in the Climate Challenge competition, because we wanted um, also for the participants, for those who came together, in the brainstorming sessions to really um, connect and to be, become part of a contact network that um, we can reach out to, to include in other kinds of events, to include perhaps in other kinds of programs. For example, when the public affairs officer at the embassy gets to know some of you know, new contacts in civil society or tech innovators, then when there are other opportunities for exchanges, um, those kinds of programs, 
then those are perhaps candidates for those programs. On the business development, the innovation entrepreneurship side, um, by looking for more partners, for example, um, <coughs> DFID was very interested and participated, TED, um, Insight Solutions, uh, the William James Foundation, uh, IDEO. So those groups also, by connecting um, some of the winners and other participants, other entries, with um, those organizations that hopefully they would then have some opportunity to develop that and look um, forward to other kinds of. This, if this is a 30 second question that has a 30 second response. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just to say, there's many things going on. So I wonder how you link with UNDP's African Adaptation Program, which is a climate change adaptation program uh, working in 16 countries, and also with the Biovision Foundation Farm uh, Communication Program. So Biovision Foundation, based in Nairobi, they have a farm communi communication program. I wonder how do you link with this, because they, they are fairly large operations, and I never heard, because I'm involved in these two, about anything what you do. Well, and... Um that is a problem. It is an issue, and I think, um, you know, you have a lot of, uh, it's not really a problem, I guess, because you have a lot of initiatives. Um, sometimes they only connect, as we find, on the ground, in country, where somebody who's involved in one happens to be involved in another. While we were um, putting together the, um, the Climate Challenge competition, we got in touch with our colleagues at the World Bank because we've worked with them on some other subjects. And they indeed also um, launched um, at COP17 at the end in December, they launched, um, and it's called Apps for, what is it called exactly? I'll give you the name. The World Bank Apps for Climate Competition. Um, so it was looking worldwide, not just Africa, but also for um, applications development. But in the World Bank case, it was specifically applications that used World Bank data. So um, I think the best thing is that uh, we try to find out, share information, um, and hopefully be able to find synergies um, among the programs and also steer, um, steer people from one to the next and kind of broaden the network. While the climate allows, let the flowers and flowers bloom. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we're out of time. And we'll move on to ICAP. Thank you very much.